So hello, my name's Rob, this is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios, and today I'm going to talk about uh, a colour we all fear. We shouldn't fear it really, it's yellow. Um, it's a fantastic colour, although it does demand a lot of patience from people. Um, I think a lot of times we hear how difficult yellow can be to paint, and I think we subliminally talk ourselves into something that we can't do. Yellow is an easy colour to paint, it just demands a little bit more patience than everything else. The reason why yellow is such a difficult colour to paint is because the pigment within yellow is very um, thin. So using this base here, I'm going to show you today how I get a nice smooth yellow and how I, how I paint it. Colours are all Citadel, uh, I'm only going to be using three colours for this video, it's Avalanche Sunset, Uriel Yellow and Scrag Brown. To start with, what I am going to do is I'm going to prepare my wet palette. If you don't have one or want to make your own, I'll leave a link in one of the corners right now uh, to a video that will show you how to do that. They are a great tool for painters and they really, really help, especially with yellow getting a very smooth finish. So on this little base here today, I'm going to show you how to get a real nice smooth finish and then I'm going to show you how to do that really um, cheeky fade that you see so many artists on the internet do. Uh, I'm going to start by just getting Avalan Sunset. I'm going to put it straight onto my wet palette. My wet palette's damp, it's not saturated uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little tiny bit of water. Uh, this is just so it's really really smooth. Yellow because it's so thin with the pigment you it can be, it can leave a streaky finish, patchy finish. Um, once again, it is a colour that demands patience. This is the third time I've now stated that and I can't state it enough. Um, to get a real good, thin, solid base coat of yellow, you know, two or three is going to be the norm. Expect sometimes with some colours and ranges for, I'm using Citadel, I always use Citadel. Um, because I've been using them for the last four years or so and I know you know how they work so my first coats on and it's dry I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I'm gonna cover absolutely everything again with a nice thin watery coat of Avalanche Sunset I add paint as I need to I add water as I need to just to ensure that everything is you know smooth build up those those coats really slowly, really thinly. Um, what this will do is you'll, you'll keep the detail in the model, which is half of the, uh, half the battle uh, by not applying paints so thick, but also with this method of getting a smooth yellow, a little recess shade on a marine with a nice highlight. And you know what, you're gonna go far with that. Um, the, the smooth base coat and the details of the model will will do most of the work for you. So that's um, that's something to always consider. Just keep working that yellow into that base, um, making sure that it's all covered nice and evenly. You know, I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to, you know, slap on a a little bit of a coat and tell myself I'll spread it out a little bit more. I'm just going to keep my paint thin and I'm just going to wait for that to dry. So same again, it's, you know, you can still see where it's a little bit streaky. Um, that's, that's part and parcel of yellow. Same again, I'm just going to go over it. I think in the end I, I, I went over this part about four times. I think I had four coats to get a really, really nice solid Avalan Sunset base coat. Um, I will show you after this one uh, how it's looking. Once again, it's important just to make sure it's all covered, your paint's thin, and just patience. That is the absolute key with yellow.
just making sure it's all covered and that it's it's nice and even. So I still wasn't happy there, so I decided to go over it um, one more time. The reason why I left, I guess, this section quite unnecessarily long was for a very necessary reason, is that I wanted everyone to see that, you know, sometimes it does take a little while for, you know, this, this solid base coat to build up. And I think this is, I think this was my fourth coat, fourth or fifth coat. I probably could have done one more after this, but I was quite happy with how it's looking. The base I'm working on was just primed with Mechanica Standard Grey, and I've now reached a point where I'm quite happy with how that looks. So there is a very smooth yellow. If you wanted to stop there, you've got a really decent base coat there, or you know, if that's the effect you're going with, then you could put a wash over, like a marine or something, and then I would dry brush Avalanche Sunset back over, you know, just to pick up those details, give yourself a bit of a uh, bit of depth using washes and things like that, then a highlight, and I'd leave it there. However, with like this marine, you can see that you, you kind of get those neat little orange fades, and this is how I'm gonna tell you how to do that. It is a bit of back and forth. Um, the colours I'm using are Avalanche Sunset Uriel. You could go brighter, say something like Flash Gits, but I'm going to work in a spectrum between a mid colour, a highlight, and a low light. And my low colour is going to be Skag, Scrag Brown, Skag Brown. I've always called it Skag. I think it's Scrag, um, which is a really nice light orangey brown. Um, and all I'm going to do start with I'm going to get Avalanche Sunset and I'm going to get a decent bit on my wet palette and I'm going to make sure that it's you know I, I, I've got enough that's going right in the middle I'm then going to wash my brush out then with Scrag Brown I'm going to do the same again I'm just going to get a little bit I'm not going to need as much as this because obviously being darker dark paints mix with yellow really really easily because the pigment once again is really thin and yellow I haven't washed out my brush after Scrag Brown here because I use it as a little bit of a guide to know how much I'm mixing in. What you want really here is for it to go from, you know, the, the orangey to the dark brown. And I'm just going to mix little spots here and there just till I'm happy. And what I'm really looking for is something halfway between both colours, but airing to the side of of our, our base coat, which is Avalanche Sunset. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this a little higher than what I would like. Um, I want the fade to be at the bottom, but I'm actually gonna work maybe two thirds of the way in. And if you can imagine, I'm dividing up my, my base into quarter sections. So, uh, or thirds, should we say, I've gone a little bit maybe further I'm, I've never been that good at fractions. What's that, like seven eighths? Mm. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm just going to work the, the colour in. Don't worry too much at the moment. Um, I'm then going to add a little bit of scrag brown just into my mix and I'm going to paint it slightly further down. What we want to do is we want to push that depth lower. So every time I'm just mixing a little bit more scrag brown into my orange mix and I'm painting it down a little bit further each time. So we reach that depth at the bottom and you know that, that lighter orange at the top. Don't worry if it looks a bit, um, you know, there's a, there's a dead straight line there. I'm going to show you how to blend that out. Um, this is kind of like wet blending, but because the paint's so thin, it's drying very quickly. So you're not getting a chance to, um, you know, blend the colors all in. You could absolutely blend this technique. Um, this is more of a, a way of painting and then glazing colors to a depth and a highlight. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna get some some yellow and I'm going to mix it into my first mix 
and then I'm actually going to work back on myself. And what's this going to do is it's going to carry on the effect. If you can imagine we started in the middle and we worked down the end, we've now gone back to the middle and we're now going to work to the other end of the colour spectrum from light to dark. And I'm just going to start feathering that effect in. Now you can kind of see here it's starting to take shape, but there's still a bit of a harsh line there and that's what we don't want. We want a really smooth blend. So what I do is I put a little bit of separate base colour, which is Avalanche Sunset, and I mix about two paint brushes of water into it. So we've got a really, really um, like thin glaze. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start working it into the middle because this is where we want our, our base colour to be. And I'm just gonna work that colour all the way in to the, uh, the brown. Don't worry, when this dries, it's gonna go very translucent. Obviously, this is the blessing of yellow. It's quite forgiving when you've reached stages like this. And I'm just gonna start working it all the way to the middle. If you look at my brush strokes, I'm working each stroke towards myself. You might have noticed this sometimes, especially with shades, is when you paint them on, the minute your brush leaves the model, it leaves like a, a bit of a heavier mark, a bit of a drip, if that makes sense. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that that drip is, you know, in, in the middle where we want that solid colour. It's dry now, and as you can see, it's you're starting to get the effect you want. I then go back to the brown, um, the brown mix. Once again, it is very thin, and I'm just going to start painting it in. Same thing, I go a little bit darker, then without washing out my brush, I go back to my yellow glaze and I start to paint that in. And all I'm doing is I'm working on that transition from that brown into the, the middle section of the color, which once again, we want to be our base coat. And I think after this uh, second glaze is when you start to see the, the really smooth effect don't get me wrong, you probably could probably do this on an airbrush a lot quicker. I've never used an airbrush, um, nor have I ever really had a desire to. It's dry now, and as you can see, that blend's become really smooth, and I've achieved this with a brush. Once again, it's a lot of patience. Next, we're going to go to Uriel Yellow. Um, the brighter the yellow, the more forgiving it is. Um, you could absolutely use Avalanche Sunset as the low light and just work to a highlight, something like Yuri or Flash Kits. Um, but I mix a little bit in with the Avalanche Sunset. It's nice and watery. It's running really nicely off my brush. And same again. I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to work about a third of the way in. And I'm just going to paint that on. Because of how thin Uriel yellow is anyway, you don't really need to water it down as much. And this is something that is just gonna come with practice and I guess knowledge of the paints uh, or experience with them, I think is probably a better way of saying it. Um, as you can see, it's made the, already the darker colors seem a lot darker. The mid color seem a lot more neutral and obviously the Uriel yellow has made that really pop out. We'll let that dry. Same again. I'll go back to my Avalanche Sunset Glaze. I think I only needed to do this the once, um, which I do. I paint that down towards my, my middle colour, which is Avalanche Sunset. And all I'm going to do is using a little bit of water on my brush, I'm then just going to smooth out that odd little bit of transition into Avalanche Sunset and let it dry. And that's really i say that's all it really is it's a lot of two in it's a lot of throw in but also at the same time i do believe it gives a really really good look um, this can be replicated on big panel sections i've done this on repulsors on uh, tiny marines you know i've recently completed uh, fafnir ran and i use this exact same method for all these little armor panels and you know it's a great way of making a model pop with a, a simple fade. I'm a big fan of doing little flourishes like this on my work. I think it does add a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, 
eye candy. You know, it's something to draw the eye to a flat armor piece. And yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a good skill to, to have in your hobby arsenal. So once again, um, if you're still here, I do appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around. Um, if you want to subscribe, it's always appreciated. And I will definitely see you next time. Um, I've got a few more how-tos planned. So everyone take care and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.